Let's cover future of trucks. That means Ford Maverick future, Bronco future, that whole new segment that this one here has created, that small, fun truck segment, fuel efficient truck segment. Now this thing can still work pretty hard, 1,500 pounds of payload, up to 4,000 pounds of towing. And we've got some possible competition on the way. So let's just go check that out right now. You can check this out over at Car Scoops, Car Buzz, Motor Biscuit, but right here for this time, we'll look at Car Scoops for a moment. Now they've done a little rendering of this, and this is because Kia mm -hmm. is gonna be getting into the truck market, folks. What do you think, Marie? I'm surprised, but at the same time, I would say it's time. Because <laughs> they didn't have that kind of market, and I guess there's so much demand on it because uh, everybody that's in, in the construction business needs a, a truck, so I don't know why they didn't did it before. Now, I'm not necessarily going to be rushing to get one of these. I will want to see many years <laughs> to find out if the powertrains they offer are you know good i'm still a little burnt on the 1.6 liter from kia and hyundai that had some serious issues i'm also you know a little yeah, concerned when it's new you need to to check before <laughs> now there's a, a couple of years where the mm -hmm. two liter had some issues as well and we're talking about major failure on a very substantial number of vehicles. And, you know, if you have a 1.6 liter Kia and you start to hear it tick or clack, uh, clack, 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 uh, it's just a question of time before it goes from clack, clack, clack to bang, bang, bang. So not good. <laughs> so that's going to be part of our talk about future of trucks. We're going to be talking about new models, but also previous problems because that's all part of the little talk. You know, it's part of how we decide whether we're gonna buy a model or not. I think it's all very important. Now, this is the bigger of the two trucks that Kia plans to offer. Now, this is just a rendering. Uh, so, we'll get a bigger one, most likely based off the Telluride platform. And mm -hmm. we'll get a smaller one, and it's probably gonna be probably based off the Santa Cruz platform. Which, so it's one the same size as the Maverick to be the competition. Yes, oh, Maverick will likely have some competition somewhere either 2025 or 2026, maybe and being announced 24 or 25 for an arrival of either 2025 or 2026. And I think if you, uh, we ask you what you think about this, Kia, no matter what they do, you'll be probably happier with it than the Santa Cruz. With the Kia? Yes. Styling wise, I don't know. I'm not sure, but yeah, styling wise, maybe uh, if it stays like that, because I know it's only uh, <laughs> a model that they show, but it won't come out like that. But for now, I love that it's big, but I'm not sure about the lights. It looks like a Rivian <laughs> in the front. So no, I'm not sure about the look and the futuristic look. It was never mine. <laughs> we'll we have, see with Ford. We have different renderings here. So we've got another rendering here. If we check this yeah, out, it could be a lot different. This is from Motor Biscuit. So that's their rendering of what it could look like. Now we do have to remember that the two mm. trucks they offer could look very different because yes, Santa Cruz Rev Nation. I hear you. Santa Cruz styling is awful for some. I really liked the interior, other than too much gloss, dark black. And gloss means for a lot of fingerprints. So my need to have a clean inter vehicle interior just drove me absolutely crazy. But the rest, <laughs> it felt very high-end and luxurious, actually, the Santa Cruz. Now, the outside, I, I grew up playing uh, Zelda, so I really love the Triforce triangles <laughs> all over the place. I've said it on the channel before. I'm just happy that Hyundai tried their own styling. So it's different, and I'm okay with that. Is it the truck it I want? It fits well with the rest of the line of Hyundai. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's... That's their color. <laughs> I think it's a good looking truck if you're not really looking for a truck styling. You know, if you just want something that doesn't look like anything else, just like how traditionally 
the Honda Ridge line appe appealed to people. It appealed to people who didn't want a truck but needed a truck and didn't want it to look like a truck but still needed the practicality of a truck. Well, they'd go out and get a Ridge line and then real truck people would make fun of the Ridge line and they were fine. They're like, you know, I've got my own styling. I don't want a truck but I have to have one. So this is my, my in-between. They're, they're kind of uh, when you have to settle for a truck but don't want a truck. <laughs> I think no one... I don't understand that aspect. I think having a truck is great. I think it's like, you know, screaming eagles, full out freedom and liberty. Being able to purchase a big truck is, it's special. You know, if you go to Europe, good luck trying to have a big truck with a big engine. You have to be a millionaire because they'll just tax you to, well, not to death because, you know, you're, well, if you're wealthy enough, you won't be taxed to death. If you're not wealthy enough and you keep the vehicle instead of eating, well, then yes, theory, theoretically, they could tax you to death if you don't buy food, but you continue to make your car payment. But these days, there are higher rates of people not making their car payments. Uh, and that's unfortunate. And we'll get that to that in episode two when we actually talk about what's going on in the automobile market, but just overall, the financial market, the, the health of the economy. And a lot of what, whether it's a buyer or seller's market, if we go back to the very first slide here, the very, our thumbnail, whether it's a buyer or seller's market is all about the economy. And I think a lot of people forget that, you know, back in 2021 where dealers were having these increased prices, well, that was possible because the economy was very strong and you had very high demand for comparatively very low supply. So that drove up prices. And if the dealers wouldn't have driven up prices, well, then um, rebuyers are really kind of scalpers the same way that, you know, Taylor Swift tickets get horrendously scalped. Taylor Swift is very happy so, saying that she has tickets for $100 and her tickets are incredibly unaffordable. Well, the problem is by having those unbelievably artificially low prices that is way, way, way below actual demand. Well, the problem is scalpers buy up all the tickets and then sell them at a much higher price. And because they control the overall flow while well, they can increase the prices even more so they could have probably pushed out the scalpers if they just sold the tickets higher that's what actually actually that's what manufacturers did they raised prices making it no longer possible for manu for dealers to increase those prices so future of trucks well we'll get to really pricing future in episode two but let's just continue to talk about the fun stuff what are they going to look like We've got a little spy photo here of an actual Kia out on the road. You've got, you know, a little, L so it's going to almost certainly be, that looks like LED lights to me. So we can have an idea of the light design, even the grill design. It's going to look like it's going to have an open face grill and two sizes, Maverick size, as well as if it's off the Telluride platform, that's going to be probably mid-size truck pickup truck uh, a yeah. ford ranger tacoma competitor on the and i don't mention the the colorado i'm mentioning uh the really the global markets the ford ranger is a global vehicle the tacoma is a global vehicle now we'll have kia offering probably two global vehicles one that's going to be a lower price point to bring people into the truck mm -hmm. world the way the maverick is and yeah. then another one to make profit and I guess it's easier for them to start with smaller truck. Uh, if they go uh, too big, maybe they will have trouble uh, with the tow and stuff like that. So they yeah. maybe it's, Towing. it's better to start small. And when they are um, able to, to do it, to do a truck, they, they will be bigger. Like and the yeah, and the competition, if they try to compete with the F-150, quite honestly, they're going to have to pour you know that's hard <laughs> compete with f-150 <laughs> when the ford ranger in 2011 got you know did when they chose to take it off the market it's because they needed they needed and wanted to put at least eight billion dollars into the f-150 they they were saying the ranger needed eight billion and if i recall my numbers correctly mm -hmm. the f-150 they put poured 11 billion dollars into the f-150 so they couldn't pour the proper amount into each vehicle and they didn't want to split the pot in two they really want to pour in 2011 so much money into the f-150 that it would just you know kind of be unbeatable 
And sales wise, it's been unbeatable, world's most sold vehicle. I don't think Kia, right up to the bat, can make a vehicle where the frame is going to compete with Ford's, you know, steel frame. And actually, they have high strength steel, it's steel mixed with bore. Uh, so it's a high strength steel, it's ladder uh, based with eight cross members. Five of those are welded. They go through the frame, welded on each side. So they're through frame, cross members, transversal supports. So payload, you know, payload going up to, 20, uh, you know, 2,900. You can have a four-door F-150 with a six and a half foot box that has a payload of 2,564 pounds. That's pretty much more than the f 250 or the 3500s, the sorry the 2500 diesels on the market have payloads of 17 18 sometimes 1900 pounds. So it's beating out 2500s the F150. Can tow 14000 pounds with an F150. Kia's not going to be able to first off the bat be able to be to compete with that and I also I'm not going to be rushing to get one of these unless they pull out some hat trick and pull out a motor that has been already proven to be very, very reliable and to compete, well, very powerful. The Ford Ranger has the 2.7 liter V6 twin turbo, which in an F-150 has a world of power, has an great fuel economy for a truck. I don't know what Kia, you know, maybe they'll, they'll recycle, they'll retool, reprogram and redo the internals on the motor from the Stinger, the Kia Stinger, because it's, it's pretty, it's a powerful six. So they, they could produce something very exciting. And I, I hope they do, because if they do, and a lot of sales go towards there, well, it'll force prices down. Mm. Competition is good. When, if good Kia point. comes out with a fantastic interior, it's going to push Ford, Dodge, and GM, and Toyota to mm -hmm. come up with a better, in well, actually, I'm very impressed with Toyota's new interior. I'm very impressed with uh, Ford's current interior. Dodge, the Ram, has a great interior. I, you know, not my favorite truck, but... Uh, I will be curious to see uh, if they sell more than the, the Hyundai Santa Cruz. If it looks like that, I think mm, they will. Not sure. <laughs> Oh, oh, you're I'm not, not a fan? sure at all. You're gonna say it looks but like a fish. At the same time, <laughs> when we <laughs> we look on the side, it it really looks like a Santa Cruz when you just check the side. Well, the fenders. Mm, that's curious. Same fenders, <laughs> same plastic fenders here. Yeah. Styling. It's it does got, not have triangles, yeah. but yeah, it's the same form. Hmm. No, oh, I hope it won't look like that. <laughs> you got the back here, the back window. The styling wise, okay, you can. I can say that looks good, but I've sat in the back seat of the Santa Cruz and I found that that was a downside. It's claustrophobic in the back seat and they're not helping things by having this line go up. Yes, it gives yeah, it a really sporty a look, window. but it, you know, people want a small, affordable, well, people want an affordable truck and they're willing to take a smaller truck in order to have an affordable truck. And people want to have good fuel economy, which if it forces them a smaller truck, that's what they're going to go for. Remember, the F-150 Lightning had hundreds of thousands of reservations, and now those reservations aren't so much turning into, a good portion of them aren't turning into sales because they don't have readily available, you know, the Pro model. That original Pro model at its original price really showed us that hundreds of thousands of people want a truck, that the monthly payment is very affordable, and that you put no fuel into it or have very low fuel cost. That's why we've seen it with the Ford Maverick, 70 some percent, about 70% of Maverick, you know, people who want a Maverick, 70% of them roughly want your model, the hybrid. Now, how have you found your hybrid experience? <laughs> That's why we waited, we waited for so long. Everybody wants a hybrid, but it's worth the wait, definitely, because I really love my Maverick. Uh, it helped me economize the fuel. And when I'm stuck, because I'm only doing city road to go to work. So uh, when I'm stuck in the traffic, I'm, I'm happy now because I don't spend any fuel. I see it's electric. And then I can wait. I'm not uh... five liters per hundred kilometers now that the <laughs> cold Canadian wind winter is no longer biting at your buttocks. <laughs> buttocks. 
It's another, it's a polite word for, for your posterior. Okay, <laughs> I only knew the buttocks that you inject in your face. I was like, which buttocks? That is <laughs> Botox, oh, okay. whereas I said buttocks. Buttocks, oh, sorry. Because I didn't, didn't want to swear. <laughs> I feel there's no need to swear. And you know what, Jambi, uh, Minstro, uh, yeah, has the right word for um, uh, the Kia truck. It looks like a smoother Santa Cruz. A smoother Santa Cruz, totally yes. Totally true. And it's an undress in Santa Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of feel like I prefer Kia over Hyundai. And I know, you know, Hyundai is supposed to be sort of the more, a little more high end, but I just prefer the styling from Kia. I like the styling of the Kia Stinger. I like the styling of the Telluride. Yeah, when they came with the Telluride, they, they changed a lot really of the Really like the styling. Yeah. Yeah. A good and improvement. And the Kia Stinger, I almost, I, I thought long and hard whether I'd buy one. And had we known we're back <laughs> then we were that. having a kid, I would have been like, well, it's kind of like a four-door Mustang. Uh, but, you know, whatever. Shelby, it's a family. We don't need it. Yeah, no. We what we car. need is a uh, Ford Mustang Shelby GT350 or because a there's a back seat <laughs> that kids, a baby seat can go into. Mm-hmm. You sure about that? We clearly <laughs> need a Bronco, Bronco. <laughs> clearly can't have a Bronco because of the depreciation off the F-150 Lightning. The I saw at the beginning of the chat a joke about a minivan. I told you it will never happen to us. Never. Anyway, Ford doesn't have a minivan, so we're good. We go. <laughs> Problem solved. 